Jaguars fans, welcome back, right back into the fan cave. This is going to be a great video. We're going to be breaking down who are the busts of the uh, 2021 season so far and who are the, the boom players, you know, who are those players that are really far exceeding uh, all expectations of them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the booms. You know, let's start off with the good stuff. Let's finish with the bad. And my first boom player is actually going to be a player that a lot of people didn't want uh, to be on this team going into this year. A lot of players were thinking, you know, let him try free agency. Don't actually apply the franchise tag. But ultimately we did. And he's playing very, very well thus far. You know, we're six games into the season. And Cam Robinson has played a litany of, you know, Hall of Fame future talent. You know, he's played uh, Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, Trey Hendrickson, Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, players of that nature. And he is he has zero sacks. You know, that that who would have thought that all of those players going up against this team's left tackle was going to have zero sack, or uh, they would have zero sacks off of the left tackle. I'm very happy with his performance so far. He only has three penalties on the year, which is, you know isn't great, but they're acceptable considering the fact that the talent level that I just rattled off. That's that's an incredible. I will gladly trade three penalties, which are you know I believe it was a couple holdings and illegal hands to the face, and. Or I, actually, I think one was at a, a formation, but I digress. Zero, you know, zero sacks allowed. He's uh, he's one of the five uh, starting offensive linemen that has allowed James Robinson to rush for the amount of yards that he has. James Robinson, you know, he has far exceeded our expectations. He's actually my second player that I want to get into. James Robinson is 84 touches. That's the tenth most in the league. Meanwhile, he's all he's sixth in the league in total rushing yards with 460, and I believe he's top five as well for. Uh, rushing touchdowns with five on the year he's averaging five and a half yards at carry well i mean that is spectacular considering we were going into this wondering where our semblance of offensive production was going to come from it's clearly coming from james robinson and then trevor can rely on that to actually be a uh, to have a solid run game the, everyone always says the best way to help a rookie quarterback is to have a solid run game and that is exactly what we have in jacksonville unfortunately etn goes down so it, it doesn't uh it doesn't add a whole lot in the passing game but james robinson does offer something he's hauled in 17 catches i believe on 19 targets for 116 yards no no scores unfortunately especially because i have him in all my fantasy leagues but still 17 catches he's a he's a good reliable out of the backfield receiver uh even though he is that downhill bruiser that we've known to come in love here in jacksonville especially out of james robinson now this third one, he's going to be someone that I think is, all, he's a heck of a player. He was brought in to not be this position, and it's Jamal Agnew. He was brought in to be a returner. I believe he was paid $3 million just to be the return specialist here in Jacksonville. And then ultimately has become someone that is, we're excited to see what they have for him in the next week's offense. Jamal Agnew has caught 13 passes on 12, um, 13, uh, on, his, on his 13 targets, excuse me, he has caught 12 passes for 146 yards. Uh, unfortunately, no scores, but he he's made some incredible catches thus far. He's had that incredible toe drag swag catch uh, in the Thursday night game against Cincinnati. He's been great in the short screen game, kind of uh, as LaVisca Chenault has been elevated to fill in DJ Chark's position as the deep play threat. Jamal Agnew has played uh, very, very well in, in lieu of Visca moving up to fill Chark's spot. Now, yeah, he's not just a receiver either. He is a very, very, very capable returner. You know, he has the two special teams touchdowns. He has the kick six, which was just, that's going to go down as one of the greatest Jaguar plays in history, 109-yard kick six. Then he also has the kickoff return for the touchdown. He was voted as the uh, AFC uh, Special Teams Player of the Month for the month of September. And in my opinion, he is truly solidifying himself as one of the best uh, wide receivers on this team obviously if I had to rank them as they go right now it would be Jones, Visca, Agnew so I'm very excited to see what he looks like coming out of the bye week into Seattle they, they, they have one of the worst defenses in the league so I think that they're going to be able to use Jamal Agnew very very well and just get him into some great opportunities to make a lot of big plays for us now we've talked about the fun stuff we need to get to the bad stuff we need to get to the guys that have absolutely just been bad on this team they have not been very good and they have, and whether it was their expectations were through the roof, or whether they have just not been performing well, you know, DJ Chark. I made a video about. I made a video back in like May saying that I think he was going to be the biggest disappointment on this Jaguars team, and my biggest reason was he can't stay healthy. I'm not. This isn't a me saying I'm right thing. It's just a 
this is he's he can't stay healthy. There's going to be a lot of people that want him to stay on this team. I am adamantly against that. I do not want DJ Chark on this team uh, past his rookie contract. I don't think he's earned a second contract outside of his one year where Minshew exploded. Um, I think that that season earned Chark and uh, Minshew a lot of money because outside of that, they haven't shown a whole lot. And ultimately, you know, DJ has seven catches on 19 targets for just over 150 yards and two scores. When you're not catching half your passes thrown your way that's that's not a good sign you're a wide receiver your job is to catch the ball and yes i know there have been some that have been overthrown by uh trevor and a lot of his targets came whenever trevor was playing very very badly but still you were you were you want to be paid as the number one wide receiver for this team that was our expectations of you going into this 2021 season and you have just fumbled everything not fi- not literally just figuratively you've just you fumbled everything that the team has handed you you've had two great catches i'm not going to say you haven't you've made incredible incredible plays but you your health is a massive issue in jacksonville and you were you had you were supposed to offer a lot and ultimately, you just didn't offer much at all. You di- you didn't have – you don't have anything to show for your your time played this season in Jacksonville. Last season, obviously in 2019, you had a great year. We were a Pro Bowl player, but you just – you aren't the player that you were billed to be. And for that reason, you're a massive disappointment in my eyes for this season and last season as well. And you're, you're on my bus list for this season thus far through the bye week. Uh, another player is uh, A.J. Can. AJ Can is he's the proud owner of being the first ever single digit PFF grade that I have ever seen in my life. Obviously, I'm not going to put all my weight into the fact that he is uh, of a PFF grade. They make some wild accusations saying that, you know, like um, that just very, very good players in this league are like the 50th, 60th best player in that position in the league. And it's just like that doesn't make sense that Jamal Adams, like I think I saw that he was like the 65th out of 65th best out of like the 72 starting or corners or safeties that have started in the league. Like obviously Jamal Adams is not the 65th best player in his position right now in the NFL. So um, there's weird things like that. But whenever they grade poorly, especially a single digit, that's that nothing good comes from that. He isn't a penalty nightmare, you know. That's like that's that's not a problem that he has. You know, Jawan Taylor. It was I was I was putting an offensive lineman on this on this section, and it was either going to be Jawan Taylor or AJ Can. AJ Can ends up winning it just because he has more time in the league, and you expect that out of a player that was drafted in the third round. Obviously, it was in a time when he was when this Jaguar team was terrible. I believe he was drafted in 2015. He you know he went through the suck years of 2015, 2016. Has the success of. 17 and then it's just been okay what have you done you know we're looking at this and you're like you haven't done anything at least norwell has the accolade of all pro to hang his hat on he's an excellent in run coverage you struggle in both ends you struggled i've seen him struggle in run coverage i've seen him struggle in pass coverage and it's just whenever you have someone uh, playing in lieu of your position because you're injured like uh, ben barch currently is and we don't see any improvement, or we don't see any real regression out of that position that you now have a backup in. That just shows that you aren't that good of a player. You know, Ben Barch is a he's someone that came out of a you know directional school university out of like out of some like D two D three school, and no one's expecting a ton out of him. Obviously, he rose through draft boards because of his protein shakes with fifteen different weird things in it. And but whenever Ben Barch has been playing in his absence we haven't really seen that much of a regression. And so obviously he's just a half step ahead of being a backup in this league. And you you take him out, you put in someone that, you know, you average him out, you give me a, like a C plus player at that position. I think this offensive line is a very good unit. Now, this is going to be my first defensive player actually on this list entirely. It's going to be Caleb on chase on. He's going to be, he, he is the biggest bust that's on this defensive line. I, I know a lot of people are going to say that Taven Bryant is. Taven Bryant has been playing decently in the run game this year. He's not been terrible. Obviously, he hasn't found the field a whole lot. But at the same time, he is, when he has been on the field, he has been he has been very good. I kind of equate him to like a Shaq Quarterman. He just, Shaq Quarterman doesn't have the stench that Taven Bryant has on him. But Caleb Von Chason is in one of the you know top three, top four most important positions on the field harassing the quarterback and he's only had and he's played 22 games so far in Jacksonville after being drafted 20th overall in the 2020 draft 
and he's only he's played in 22 games, two sacks, 13 quarterback hits. That's not okay. That's nowhere near what we want to see out of him. That's no semblance of pressure at all, and it's and it's no surprise when because you you. You can look at any stat sheet that you want to going from week one of 2020 all the way to now, and they're probably going to just be sprinkled in with Caleb Von Chase on stats. You're not, you're, it's going to be a hit or miss where, where and when you see his name on the stat sheet because he's not going to be consistently on it like you know players Josh Allen, DeWan Smoot, uh, Roy Robertson Harris, even though he's been uh, battling some injury, injury stuff coming in and off the, um, the injury list. And... He's just he he's not he's not what we what we thought we were going to be getting out of a first round defensive end and it never says anything good whenever uh, a player like Dewan Smoot has been absolutely stepping up both on and off the field. Congratulations on the baby Dewan. Congratulations on your success on the field as well. You've been playing incredibly well in a uh, in a contract year for you and you're obviously starting over a first round pick that was picked last year. Uh, this was a terrible uh, first round for the Jaguars in 2020 with obviously CJ Henderson's gone. Caleb Von Chase on looks like he should be gone. I would have I would I would dare say that he should be gone uh, faster than uh, Taven is because it's just when he fla- he has these great flashes and it's great but then he goes through these times when it's just miserable and he just can't seem to get out of his own way. So you know so just a r- quick recap Cam Robinson, Jamal Agnew and James Robinson have far, far, far exceeded my expectations coming into this 2021 year. Obviously, James Robinson had huge expectations, and he has still far exceeded them. Jamal Agnew has been a a return uh, specialist and ace, been amazing, and he's even added some of the wide receiver game. Cam Robinson has been playing very, very well after being franchise tagged. Clearly, bringing Walker Little in was a massive upgrade and uh, brought in the competition that we needed to to actually get Cam to, to perform to a high level. Now, whether whether or not we resign Cam, or whether he just says, you know what, I want to go out to the free uh, the free agency market, see what a good left tackle is going to get, shoo, uh, I don't doubt that that's not going to happen, and it's it's probably going to happen. Honestly, and the Jaguars are going to have to pay a lot of money if they want to keep Cam Robinson on this team. But for my disappointments, my guys that just really dropped the ball, dropped the bag. Some of them are in contract years, and. It's DJ Chark. He's just never been able to stay healthy outside of 2019. And because he's shown he can't be the Pro Bowl receiver, he just cannot stay healthy. And, you know, the old saying, you can't help the club in the tub. That's facts. And that is DJ Chark right now. He's been injured, uh, I believe, four out of his th- or three out of his four years so far in Jacksonville, and he's on IR right now. And then AJ Can. He, he's a veteran in this league, and he is still performing mediocrely and just – not the not to the level that you expect a six year vet to be playing at, and then to round it all out, Caleb on Chase on just looks like the bust of the century. He's going to go into the trash heap with other Jaguars first round uh, pass rushers like Derek Harvey. You know, even Taven Bryant is just a whole lump of bad defensive line picks in the first round. I believe Caleb on is on the fast track to go into that trash heap, and it's just. He has a, he's, he was a, he was a waste of a pick. He was he was a bad pick, and that's that's it, you know. But I do want to thank all of you for watching. And as it it I love making these videos for you guys. So if you did enjoy the video, please drop a like on it. It would mean a world to me. It means you like these videos that I'm putting out for you. So please subscribe to the channel as well because you never want to miss a video. Because I am I'm consistently putting out, in my opinion, pretty good content covering our Jacksonville Jaguars, our poor one and five Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm covering them, and. With that being said, stay safe and go Jaguars.